Hey, how's it going everybody? It's your bro here. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys about two-dimensional arrays in C++. And at the end of this video, we're going to be working on a project where we can create a virtual computer keyboard. It currently doesn't do anything. All it does is look pretty. But I'll teach you guys how to create this using a two-dimensional array. So let's get started. Before you reach the end of this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that we together can challenge and defeat the mighty YouTube algorithm. Think of a basic array as one-dimensional, as in it only contains a single row of elements, while a two-dimensional array can contain many rows of elements. Think of it as an array of arrays. So on your screen right now, I have a basic one-dimensional array. Well, we can turn this into a multi-dimensional array by adding more arrays to it, but there's a few changes that we have to make. So if this is going to be a two-dimensional array, we need two sets of straight brackets right next to the array name, and we're going to need to place the amount of rows and columns that we have in our multi-dimensional array into each of these straight brackets. So this is going to end up looking like some sort of grid or matrix instead of just a single row. So we are going to create multiple rows and separate each with a comma and surround our entire set of rows and columns with another set of curly braces. So all I'm going to do is just add a, another row. So we need a, another set of curly braces and I'll put some more numbers in here. So four, five, six, seven, I'm just going in order. We'll separate each array with a comma, then we'll add a, another array. So we need another set of curly braces and I'll type in eight, nine, 10, 11. All right, now what we need to do is surround all these rows with its own set of curly braces. So we'll put that here and here. All right, so this might be difficult to see. What I like to do with 2D arrays is just to put each of these rows on a new line, just so it's easier to see and work with. Okay, so what you see now is that this is starting to look like some sort of grid, which is kind of the uh, point of a two-dimensional array. So there's rows and columns to this. With the first set of straight brackets, we're going to place the amount of rows that we have, which is one, two, three. So we're going to place three here. And this set of straight brackets is for the columns and we have one, two, three, four. So we'll place four here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a two-dimensional array. Now, if you ever want to determine how many elements that you have in your 2D array, just multiply the amount of rows by the amount of columns that you have. So in this example, we have three rows, times four columns, so that's 12 elements. So here we have 12, but remember that we start with zero though, so it's going to be the numbers zero through 11. Let's say that you want to work with or display one of these elements in the two-dimensional array. You'll need to retrieve that specific element. So it's going to be very similar to a one-dimensional array, but there's one extra step. So let's say that we just want to display one of these elements. So we'll just see out, then we need to type in the name of the array. So for my example, the array name is numbers, but we need two sets of straight brackets. We're going to place the row number here and the column number here of what we want to retrieve. So let's say that we want to retrieve this number six. So we need to find out which row that it's in. And remember that we start with zero. So this is row number zero and this is row number one. So we're going to place one here and then let's count the columns. So this is column number zero, column number one, column number two. So we'll place two here because we want this six. And that's pretty much it. Let's run this just to prove that I'm not a liar. Yep, here's our number six. All right, here's an exercise for you. What do we place here for the rows and columns if we want to retrieve this number 11? Take a moment to figure it out. Yep, that's right. We're going to place two here, and then we're going to place the number three. Let's test this out. Yep, there's our number 11. So let's say that you want to display all the elements of this array. Well, one easy way to do that is to use a nested loop. We'll have a outer loop that's in charge of the row that we're on and an inner loop that's in charge of the columns. So for the statements for the outer loop, this is what we'll write. So usually you can write int i and set this equal to zero, right? Um, we could do that, but I think for this demonstration, I'm actually going to rename i to row, all right? And then we're going to continue this while our row 
is less than the amount of rows that we have, which is three. And then we're just going to increment our row by one. And it's going to be basically the same thing for the columns. So we can say int column equals zero. We'll continue this column as long as column is less than the amount of columns that we have, which is four. And then we're going to increment our column by one. So within the inner for loop, what we'll type is C out, and we're just going to display our array numbers at the index of row, as well as the index of column. And then inside the outer loop, we'll just want to move down to the next line. We can easily just do that with C out ENDL. And before we run this, I'm just going to add a space after each of these elements, just so everything's lined up nicely. Okay, let's run this. Yeah, and here is our two-dimensional array. It got kind of funky with uh, these two-digit numbers, but you can still see that it's a grid of some sort, a matrix of rows and columns that contains values. So that's the basics of two-dimensional arrays. If you would like to continue, we're going to work on a project where we create a virtual keyboard, kind of like the keyboard that's in front of your computer right now, assuming you're not on a mobile device. So if you want to continue, let's work on that project. Well, welcome back. So for this project, we're going to create a virtual computer keyboard. Maybe not the entire thing, but we'll just include maybe the numbers and the letters and some of the other special characters. And then afterwards, if you want to go crazy and add like an escape button, a backspace button, enter, shift, you could do so. But we'll just keep it simple for now, then you can go crazy afterwards. So let's begin by making a 2D array of maybe characters. So we'll make this of the char data type. And let's call this 2D array maybe keyboard. And then we need two sets of straight brackets. And we're going to set this equal to then all of the keys that we want to add to this keyboard. So I'm just going to stick with the numbers 1 through 0. Well, 1 through 9 and 0. And then the first three rows of letters. So that's Q, W, E, R, T, Y, so on and so forth, all the way until the last row of letters. So I'm actually going to fast forward this video because it's going to take a lot of time to actually enter in all these individual characters. So feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, I should have all of this code completed and posted in the comments down below. So you can always copy this portion of the 2D array if you don't feel like typing this by hand. So I'm just going to fast forward the video until the point in time where I already type out all of these individual characters and then I'll walk you through it. A few moments later. All right, well, welcome back again. So here is our two-dimensional array of characters. The first row is the numbers. Then we have Q, W, E, R, T, Y, blah, 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 blah. The second row is A, S, D, F, blah, blah, blah. Then Z, X, C, V. And then we had some extra space, so I just added a few special characters here. All right, so then with the straight brackets, we need to list the amount of rows and columns that we have. So we have four rows, we're going to place the number four within the first set of straight brackets, and we have 10 columns, so we're going to place 10 here. So this is now our 2D array. Now let's say that we want to display this. We're going to use a nested loop to do this, kind of like what we did before. So we need an outer loop for the rows and an inner loop for the columns. So what we'll type in here is maybe int, then let's go with rows again, so int row, then we'll continue this as long as row is less than the amount of rows that we have. So we can put four here. All right. And then we'll increment our row and we'll do the same thing, but with columns. So int column equals zero, then column is less than 10. All right. And then column plus plus. And then we are going to display each of these characters so we will see out our keyboard at whatever our row is as well as our column and then we'll just add a space between each of these uh, characters when we display them all right and then we just need to move down to the next line so we'll place that within the outer for loop so we'll just see out endl Okay, we should be good then. Let's run this. 
Yep, and here is our virtual keyboard. So someday, if you ever learn about graphics for C++, you could easily replace all of these individual characters with labeled buttons, and then you can click on each of these buttons to actually enter in a character or letter. So that would be really useful then one day. So basically, a 2D array can be used to display like a grid or matrix of information, whether it's like a table, a chart, a grid, a 2D array is pretty useful because you can organize it in rows and columns. So that's basically how a 2D array works. If you would like a copy of all the code that we worked on, I'll post it in the comments down below. And if you're looking for additional practice, why don't you post a program that you worked on that involves a 2D array? But yeah, that is how 2D arrays work in C++. Hey you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. If you learn something new, then you can help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.